Officer Carrie Roscoe was the first Omaha police female officer killed in the line of duty. Let's go back to Brian Mastry, who is standing by live at St. Joseph Cemetery. I know you were showing the helicopter pictures and we started to hear the helicopter able one as well. And so we turned our camera away from the gravesite to look beyond. And this is what we're seeing. You're, you see the flags and all the citizens, many of them from Council Bluffs here on the right side. That is the entrance to St. Joseph Catholic Cemetery. That big flag that you see there it looks lower than it's a little deceptive, but that is from the Council Bluffs Fire Department from what I could tell up on their ladder trucks. The helicopter, I don't know if you pointed that out, Mallory, but it, in a way, its goal was to lead the procession. It's a bit of a tradition that if you have a flyby, that sort of thing, in this case, you have the helicopter and you can kind of see it high above. Do we see that? Hey, Jim, can you zoom out? Do you see the helicopter just above the procession there? It's kind of hovering right in that spot there as the... Police motorcycles are beginning to come in. They were, of course, you saw them lead the way from St. John's a church in Council Bl or in Omaha on the Creighton campus and then made that what normally for most of us is about a 10 to 15 minute journey. And it's probably been well over a half hour. But you see the helicopter just kind of hovering among the evergreens here. We're kind of up on a hill and the entrance is down uh, way below us. You have a whole bunch of people that have been planning this and getting things set up for hours here, though, trying to get, make sure that they know all the people are able to pull in, all the, that are able to park. And at the end of the day, think of this, Mallory, 400, I think I saw a tweet from Omaha police, 453 cruisers are in this procession, 453, which is just amazing and incredible amount of support. But you have to figure out where you're going to park all of those vehicles as they pull in. It's, a, it's an older cemetery. I think when I read on the sign when I pulled in, it was like founded in 1864. It's cobblestone, similar to the old market roads when you pull in and the entrance. And then it's narrow and windy. There are a lot of cemeteries that are fairly wide and we get a little used to that and being able to pull in. But this one is narrow, lots of winding roads, and it won't be the easiest task to get so many people inside. As we've been here for a couple of hours, within the last 20 minutes or so, the honor guard has arrived. They will, they've been practicing the, the handover from the hearse uh, to the grave site. They are making sure that they want to get the flag folding just right, all of those particular details that they work on. But they know this one, because it was an officer, killed in the line of duty, they want to be ever so more poignant and make sure the details are rock solid. There you see Able One leading the procession now, coming essentially into the airspace of the cemetery. We have a camera up on there that you've been able to follow along the way. And then down below, you'll eventually start to see the police motorcycles and then the rest of the procession as they angle in to St. Joseph Cemetery here in Council Bluffs. As we mentioned earlier, you can't see it from here, but I sent out a tweet earlier in the day that there is a big blue sign that says hashtag carry on right at the entrance here to the cemetery. A lot of people were taking pictures of that. A lot of people were wearing blue that I saw. A lot of people wearing those special shirts that talk about uh, carry, hashtag support blue. They also talk about the hashtag carry on and they also talk about her badge number. It is tradition that her badge number will be retired, badge 1969 in all of this. You probably have also noticed that police officers are carrying, and here comes the first wave of the procession. They're making their way up the cobblestone drive. It's fairly steep. We walked up it earlier into the heart of the cemetery here and they probably have from the position that you see them they probably have uh, 250 300 yards before they get to the grave site a lot of officers have the black band on their badges that's to typify a mourning period that they have by putting a black piece of tape or cloth over the badge the family is in the procession you see them usually 
they're kind of uh, in front of the hearse in many cases. Uh, that would be uh, Officer Kerry Orozco's husband, Hector. Uh, their two stepkids, Natalie, eight, Santiago, six, and of course, Olivia is in the family. You see the vehicle, the, the pickup that has the American flag uh, tapestry on the outside. That is the honor, the U.S. Honor Guard. They are the ones that were came up just a couple of days ago from, they were in Florida and then they stopped in Texas and then they came to Omaha to deliver a special flag for those who are lost in the line of duty. Unfortunately, I was told that they are headed towards Colorado for a trooper that was killed over there uh, as soon as they are done here. So here you have the hearse as we're coming through the procession, followed by the horses. And you can sort of hear in the background, I don't know if you can hear that, Mallory, but they're kind of walking away from us, but they will circle back around. That is where you have the, the band that's playing, the honor guard, the color guard performing. You can hear the bagpipes in the background. I always think it's a bit eerie in a way when you kind of hear that because it is there to help memorialize and honor something that, that was very, very tragic. As they make their way through this narrow cemetery, they'll be tucking around probably, a, I bet it's probably a quarter of a mile that they're making a half circle. We have Abel One that is still circling the cemetery. The rain has stopped here, Mal, which is fortunate because it was coming down pretty, pretty hard right as the service was beginning around 11 o'clock on the Omaha side. And, but it is cleared up. There still looks like the threat of some rain, but but it looks like that they have gotten the tarps off and they're prepared to uh, handle this without any rain at all. Omaha Police Chief, you can tell it on the folks of all the Council Bluffs police officers here too. They are grieving, they are hurting. It's that thin blue line. But as we heard, there was a message of hope in all of this. And I guess at the end of the day, that's what you're hoping to hear when you're at a, at a funeral because it's very sad, it's very tragic. But in a way, and you see it with the carry-on, and you saw it on the little onesie that Olivia Ruth had on, that family had taken in the crib that said, keep calm and carry on. Carry, of course, the mom's name. And we were urged for all of us to take what she brought to the world, and we are the ones that will help carry it forth. And you get that impression all along the procession route, from Omaha to Council Bluffs, from all the agencies that are taking part. They felt it was... If you talk to some of the officers, Mallory, they felt it was their duty to be here, their duty. But they also knew it was A, the right thing to do, and B, because they felt touched by this officer, someone who uh, not only carried a profession, uh, raised the level on that to high regard, the standards of a profession, but in a way kind of was able to escape being a police officer because a lot of people, as Police Chief Schmatter said, people saw her as a person. They saw beyond her badge. They saw beyond her uniform. They saw her as a person, and she was able to do so many things in her 29 years here on Earth. Mallory? That is Brian Mastry. He is live at St. Joseph Cemetery as the funeral procession continues to make its way in. As we heard from Brian a few moments ago, just to give you an idea, there are 453 cruisers in this procession. 400 and 53 cruisers as they're making their way into St. John's. And we have heard the bagpipes both at the cemetery and also outside of St. John's where the funeral was held. That began at 11 o'clock earlier. One of the things that really has stuck out, I think, in all of this is just seeing the number of people lined up along the streets. In some cases, six or seven deep families taking today, no matter what, despite the weather, which was a little dicey earlier, as Brian mentioned, to line the route. Some of them even had tents set up because, you know, even if it was pouring, they were going to be standing there and showing their support today for Officer Rose Coast family. We heard from Omaha Police Chief Todd Smotter earlier in her funeral, recognizing members from the Boys and Girls Club, the team that Officer Roscoe coached, having them stand. They were at St. John's at her funeral as a round of applause broke out for the kids that she dedicated her life to helping. Officer Carrie Orozco is the first Omaha police female officer killed in the line of duty. She was 29 years old. She was a detective. 
She served seven and a half years with the Omaha Police Department. She grew up in Walnut, Iowa. She was a wife, she was a mother. As Brian mentioned, she had two stepchildren and also her baby girl, Olivia Ruth, who was set to be released from the hospital a day after Officer Roscoe lost her life in the line of duty. We did ask Omaha Police Chief Todd Schmatter if Olivia Ruth was home, but he did not know at the last news conference if she had been released from the hospital. Detective Marcus Taylor served with Officer Roscoe on the OPD gang unit, just describing her as someone who would get out of her squad car in North Omaha and South Omaha. He said he re she really served both of these communities, would pass out stickers to the kids, would give them hugs, and would really take it personally when a child that she had tried to help took the wrong path in life. She dedicated her life to helping them, to really, you know, steering them at an early age so they would make right decisions. So she would take it very personally when they would make wrong decisions and she would later have to encounter them in a different role. You can see the bagpipes marching towards the site where Officer Roscoe will be laid to rest. As Brian mentioned, the honor guard out there, there will also be um, similar to a 21 gun salute out there that the, um, the firing line, as he mentioned, is lined up and ready to go to show respects for Officer Roscoe and her family. So many American flags on display, both on the funeral procession route. Also a huge American flag, as Brian mentioned, that the Council Bluffs Fire Department hung on one of their ladder tracks as people pull into St. Joseph's Cemetery. There was also a huge American flag hung from where you cross from Omaha into Council Bluffs. Shows of respect, of support for our country, for her service all along the funeral procession route today. You can also hear OPD's Able One circling the sky above again. The helicopter did not take off until after the funeral out of respect for the family, and so they could hear first the service and also the salute and the music outside of the church where Officer Roscoe's funeral was held. Brian telling us that OPD's Able One actually led, the, the goal was for it to lead the procession route of 453 cruisers and friends and family of Officer Roscoe.
Mallory, the cars are still streaming in, so I think they're taking a pause now to be able to get more people in before the honor guard takes the casket of Detective Carrie Roscoe from the position that you see there in the hearse over to the grave site. The funeral procession still making its way into St. Joseph Cemetery. This is in Council Bluffs. The truck with the flag there, as Brian mentioned, is part of the honor flag that is um, at the cemetery to honor Officer Carrie Orozco. You can see lines and lines of people, many police officers already at the cemetery waiting for the rest of the procession to make its way in because, again, there are 453 cruisers alone in the procession. That's not even including all of her family and all of her friends and all of the people's lives that she touched that were invited inside the funeral today to honor her. It really is a powerful sight to see so many Omaha police officers, men and women in uniform, lined up right next to each other, paying their respects. Mallory, something else to listen for too, so we'll have a microphone that the family has allowed us to have over by the gravesite so we can hear the final words from the priest, among other things, here at St. Joseph Catholic Cemetery. But the, you heard it on May 20th, right? The end of watch, tiring badge, 1969. Well, there will also be a last radio call, and it is very, very powerful. It goes across police radios, and it's my understanding that that will happen here at the end of this service. It's where they officially move forward. It's the last radio call in honor of Officer Carrie Orozco, and that will go across all the radios from among all of these individuals. I know. It was so moving back in 2003 when we lost Jason Ty Pratt to a gunman. And I expect it just to be as moving here. As, as we say that, it is now starting to rain here as we're getting started. We're getting ready to begin. People are still filing in. I'm still seeing what looks like Omaha police cars coming in, all with their lights triggered. No more sirens. You still have a collection of people that are at the entrance as well. The umbrellas are getting out for family. Many of them are wearing blue. We have been asked to uh, keep our distance from the family. They wanted to be private. We appreciate the access that we do have and being able to share, uh, share the funeral of Detective Carrie Orozco with the community. I think they understand what she meant to the community and her impact and they want to be able to deal with this as privately as you can for something who someone who died in such a public way we now have appears to have former Omaha police chief Tom Warren making his way up with Omaha mayor Jean Stothert and her husband Joe walking towards the gravesite followed by, from a distance it looks like, a couple of the deputy chiefs 
and now you have other Omaha police officers filing in on the, the flanking them, working their way up. The rain is coming down heavier. Oftentimes these services are, are not lengthy. What was said was said oftentimes at the funeral service itself. This is just one last chance to say goodbye. Mallory, what you don't see is a lot of police cars are still filing in. What we were told from the beginning as we watch everyone take their place in their blue dress uniforms, that they probably will not start the service until everybody has been able to get into the cemetery here at St. Joseph Catholic Cemetery and get their place. You won't be able to get real close, but there is enough space here that people will be able to form a circle and be able to observe the gravesite service. We will be able to hear what is said there. We're about 500 feet or so away from all of this, but this is the loss of Detective Carrie Orozco's has captured a nation, as you said. And from a personal standpoint, it's one of those things where you think about, and they mentioned it during the service, they congratulated and gave kudos to the NICU for doing their work with Olivia Ruth. She was born prematurely back in February was set to go home and went home the day after her mom died. But you know, I remember when our son was born way early and you do, you save up your vacation time and all your other time because you know they're in good hands while they're in the NICU and that you know that you'll need all of that time once you come home and that's what Officer Carrie Orozco was doing. She's dedicated to her job and she was building up that leave ready to get on with the life of having Olivia Ruth at home. And then that was all taken from her. And Brian, I've got to tell you from watching all of the live images as they played out throughout the morning, it literally takes your breath away when you saw the flood of officers gathering gravesite. I mean, just the image of all of them walking down and all of them gathering. It was just a moment that you watch at home and it does. It literally takes your breath away. And as Brian mentioned, it is just beginning to rain out there. You can hear that live as we're bringing you these pictures from St. Joseph Cemetery. And as Brian has also mentioned, we have been in coordination with Officer Rosco's family in honoring their wishes. And we do really appreciate the fact that they have allowed our community to be part of this day and to honor the wife, the daughter, the mother that they loved so dearly. And we, we want to express our gratitude to them for allowing all of us to show our support for Officer Orozco.
I know you can't see it, Mallory, because we're set up and have our camera over on the side where all the officers are standing, but you're now getting fire departments from around the area. Coming in, I see OFDs, 23, followed by the Walnut Fire Department. Of course, Walnut, Iowa, is where Carrie Orozco grew up. And I see one, two, three fire trucks, engines from the Walnut Fire Department. The rain is coming down very steady right now, as we mentioned earlier. A uh, retired officer from the New York City Police Department is here. He's got his grandkids here now, but he said he thought it was poignant when it was raining earlier as the service was getting started that the rain were, in his mind, God's tears for what happened. And we're taking a live look at the funeral procession still making its way to St. Joseph Cemetery. Officers lined up, as Brian mentioned, from the fire department from Walnut, Iowa, where Carrie grew up, from departments all over our state, all over the state of Iowa, paying their respects to fallen officer Carrie Orozco. We're also seeing students here wearing blue, carrying American flags. So many schools, even daycares, bringing their entire class of students out to show support for Officer Carrie Orozco during the funeral procession route and also by following, you know, the suggestions that Omaha police made, easy ways that we can show our respect and show our support. The funeral procession has been going on for a while now, and as Brian mentioned, that's because just with cruisers alone, there were 453 in the procession, 453. There are just over 800 officers on the Omaha Police Department's force. It looks like the funeral procession just wrapped up from our live view there as the last of those cars filter in to St. Joseph Cemetery. We've heard the bagpipes both outside St. John's and also at St. Joseph Cemetery. And I mentioned earlier, it truly takes your breath away just to see all of the officers in their uniforms lined up, especially when about 70 or 80 of them were making their way down to the graveside to line up. Very powerful moment to witness. We're taking a big look at that now as they gather around Officer Orozco's casket and the seating where her family will be seated. A packed cemetery out at St. Joseph's and as Brian mentioned, Following Memorial Day, just one day removed, so many flowers and American flags decorate the cemetery as thousands of people flood in for her gravesite service.
the rain began just about 10 minutes ago, so you can see so many people hovering under umbrellas and getting ready for the gravesite service. As Brian mentioned, one man that he talked to said they were God's tears honoring Officer Carrie Orozco. Again, we're taking a live look at St. Joseph Cemetery and my co-anchor John Nicely just returned from St. John's where you covered the funeral live. And John, I know it's just been very powerful to see so many departments lined up and you saw that out at St. John's earlier. Yeah, it's interesting now to be here on the set with you and uh, what I saw at St. John's, we're seeing again right here at St. Joseph Cemetery. It's just a very powerful uh, message of support for the family and for Hector and uh, you know, so many great things were said about Carrie, and you feel like you know her. I mean, you look at a picture of her now with that smile, and you feel like you know what she's about, what she stood for, what she lived for, and it was just very unselfish life that she led, and it's a tremendous honor to uh, pay respects in this way for her life. Also very powerful to see members of the Omaha Boys and Girls Club there attending her funeral, and they did ask them to stand at one point and gave them a round of applause because those were the kids' lives that, that was really where her passion, according to all of her fellow officers, came from, is working with those kids and really giving them a chance and showing them respect that they may or may not have been or had before in their life. Yeah, they made a good point about that, uh, and it was the uh, baseball team. And, her, you know, it's if you can take one person and change their life, but Carrie's thought was, if you can take a whole team and change their life, think of what will happen in the future. Look at this tremendous picture here. There have been moments like these that literally just take your breath away as you watch this coverage and you see so many of our finest lined up in support, in silence, paying their respects today. Yeah, and those who have made the trip to be here, to be here in person representing their law enforcement agency, and as they walked by, as we stood outside of St. John's Church, uh, county sheriffs were walking by from other states. Uh, Urbandale was one from Illinois. Uh, one called the Horton Police Department, which I had never heard of before. Uh, Carroll, Atkinson, Topeka, and uh, corrections officers also coming to uh, be part of this tremendous honor. And as Brian mentioned earlier, the gravesite service is getting ready to begin. The family did allow us to have a microphone to place one up there, so we will be able to hear some of the strong messages and some of the messages of support and of love for Carrie's family from the gravesite service. We do want to let them know we truly appreciate them letting our entire community really be part of this day and part of the hugest show of support I've ever witnessed in our community. And you think of uh, her husband, Hector, I mean, they were married for two and a half years. I think it was Thanksgiving of 2012 when they got married. So 
a short time together, but um, the feeling that he must have and the heartbreak in losing his wife in this way, and at the same time to be so proud of her and what she did and stood for and did for our community, and uh, no greater love hath, hath man than to lay down his life, and she did that for, in service uh, for, as an Omaha police officer. Again, this is a live look at St. Joseph Cemetery in Council Bluffs. The funeral procession just wrapping up as it wound its way from Omaha across the bridge into Council Bluffs. Thousands and thousands of people, in some cases six or seven deep, standing outside showing their support for the family of Carrie Orozco, Officer Carrie Orozco. And Pastor Bond mentioned uh, some of the comments made last night at the wake and uh, people bringing out another side of Carrie that perhaps you haven't heard about her great sense of humor and uh, really was a practical joker and I was told that uh, when something would happen within the police uh, precinct where she was at everybody would immediately say oh Carrie did it and uh, she had such a great joy in doing that and uh, sharing that kind of fellowship with her officers in fact one relative told me that uh, she sometimes would show up at their house at night with the uh, siren, not the siren going, but the lights going, and use her blowhorn to get them to come outside. <laughs> and that's a kind of practical sense of humor that she had. And I think you need that balance when you deal with the difficult task she did on the job. I mean, this yes. is a member of the Omaha Police Department that served on the Fugitive Task Force. And as Omaha Police Chief Todd Schmatter said, she had the absolute courage to go after the worst of the worst. So it's probably those moments of relief that let her kind of absorb the job a little bit and, and get some relief from the everyday tasks. And I'll expand on that a little bit more. Uh, a relative told me that sometimes. Hey, John Mallory, I wanted itself. to give you a bit of an update okay, on the number my, of people who are Master. coming in. It doesn't seem to be letting up. So I was counting. I know, John, you had said you had talked to all sorts of different agencies. This is the first time I'm actually getting an idea of some of the agencies coming through here. Um, some of them, I don't even know where they're located. The trend these days for a lot of police departments is that they put police big letters, and then sometimes it's hard to find that the city that they're in. I see Valley County Sheriff pickup driving by right now. I've seen Scribner, Harlan Police, Colfax County, Milford, Seward County, Aurora, North Platte, Sioux Falls, Columbia, Clinton. I'm assuming that might be Clinton, Iowa. Shawnee, a number of Sarpy vehicles. I saw a Veterans Affairs vehicle come through as they still keep pouring in. Loveland, it just came through. I saw a Nebraska Furniture Mark pickup security. I saw Omaha Airport Authority, of course, the Omaha police. Many of the individuals that work for the airport are retired police officers. And so there's one from Marysville, that's Missouri. And the line does not end. Adair County, it just keeps going on. And as we mentioned, everyone seemingly wanted to wait until everyone had a chance from law enforcement to be here. City of Davenport, Iowa came by before they started the service. Clorinda, Iowa driving by. This just shows you the outreach, the impact that the life of Officer Carrie Orozco meant to so many people because it made them think of someone in their department, someone who has made an impact on them, because clearly these people don't know the officer. Uh, some of them may have come across her at training or academies, that sort of thing, but most of these she has heard from us, and it made them feel that they needed to come here, Kansas City Police, with a number of cars coming by. They felt they needed to be here to show their support, because do you know why? They know Omaha would do the same if the roles were reversed. It's like an Omaha fire uh, truck coming in as well. You know, I left uh, St. John's Church just about 20, 25 minutes ago, and as we were leaving, there were still cars leaving, going through a processional on the street. There were still people lined on the street then. Give you an idea of how many cars are coming still. It was very just impressive to take the city cam shots from the sky or from Omaha Police's Able One and to really see in perspective how many people it takes to line the long streets that they did both in Omaha and Council Bluffs. When you got that overhead perspective, it really drove home just how many families and law enforcement members, like Brian mentioned, all of these departments coming in may not have been at the funeral. They may be along the procession route, 
bet all of them getting into their cars to join the gravesite service. But just to see that and just to see that show of support in record numbers and to see so many families, especially with young children who use it as a teaching moment or who perhaps just wanted their kids to witness this, that were willing to come out today and wearing support blue t-shirts, carrying American flags, carrying signs just in a show of solidarity and unity for the support of Officer Carrie Orozco. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one thing her death does and dying for uh, her in service for all of us, it underscores again for the entire law enforcement agencies how threatening their job can be and how dangerous and so really the people lining the streets are not only supporting Carrie but also all of the law enforcement coming by and letting them know that they are appreciated for what they do for us. And what was so hard for so many people to hear is that she was one day away from maternity leave as Brian mentioned and you know obviously they were praising the NICU during the funeral and her baby girl, Olivia Ruth, and really Chief Smotter driving home the message of what we can do now and what Omaha police plan to do now with the carry on message is show support for Carrie's family and also for Olivia Ruth, who is now home and is doing well and who so many in our community have wondered how they can help. We saw diaper drives. We saw people donating to Olivia Ruth's college fund. We saw a little girl selling ribbons. We saw lemonade stands. We saw a huge show of supports for t-shirts, which sold out almost immediately, almost to the point where they had to start taking online orders. So no matter what way people contributed, even if it was just to take food down to the Omaha Police Department or to wear blue in their offices or into their schools, Every single person in this community was affected by this news and has tried to do something to show support for the department and also for Officer Roscoe and her family. Yeah, we just saw those pictures of uh, Carrie and you're at the point now where you're calling her Carrie sometimes because of what Chief Smotter said. Uh, that's how we know her that personally because of uh, what we've learned about her. But uh, that smile and those bright eyes in the picture, it just the things that you've heard that she stood for and did and helped people. Uh, they're just really in that picture as you look at her. You can see it. Powerful images from St. Joseph Cemetery as you look at countless members of law enforcement agencies all across Nebraska, all across Iowa, and as we found out throughout the day, all across the nation. Her life really made an impact nationwide, not just here in our area. And on your left, you can see the bagpipe and the drum corps as well as they're prepared to uh, actually add to the ceremony at St. Joseph Cemetery in Council Bluffs. And as the camera pans, it just seems that uh, you do not run out of people. It's just filled. It's a sea of blue of our finest here, men and women in uniform, honoring the loss of an officer that certainly will not be forgotten and certainly made an impact in the heartland. I think one of the most personal moments that came out of this is just hearing from a detective that served with Officer Orozco on the gang unit when he talks about how, you know, they'd be driving through the neighborhoods and kids would recognize her and run up to the squad car. And she'd roll down the window, she'd give him a hug, or she carried stickers around to pass out to them because she always wanted them to know that she was available for them and that she would support them. And just to hear about the recognition, he said she really um, focused her attention on the North and South Omaha areas where she was stationed. And those were really the two core groups of kids that she dedicated her life to serving. Yeah, sometimes she would see uh, a young person walking into a restaurant or a fast food and see them and walk up and give them a fist bump. And uh, the child's eyes would light up. Those stories have been told as well. And she helped uh, with the Special Olympics, had a real heart for that. And she was one of the founders of the Omaha Police Ball to get that together and the money raised there was to support Special Olympics. Again, this is a live look at St. Joseph Cemetery where the gravesite service is set to begin momentarily. Really in the last 30 minutes, the rain started coming down heavily. It was pretty light earlier, then it kind of cleared off as the funeral procession made its way down the streets of Dodge, down the streets of Douglas, over into Council Bluffs where it made its way down Broadway. Thousands and thousands of people lined up. Law enforcement, families, members of the community, even businesses letting their employees out to be there to be part of this today. And we did spend some time talking about the pallbearers for this funeral today. There were also 30 honorary pallbearers and they were made up, chosen by the family. These were friends and special friends of Officer Orozco, 
and they also were in the procession as they went into the church and left the church today. And they will be here at the gravesite as well. You can see members of the bagpipe making their way towards the gravesite right now. One of the things that we saw play out live on television was the honor flag arriving. It arrived in Omaha on Sunday and it has traveled more than 7,000 miles. It arrived here to honor Officer Rosco and the founder of the Honor Network described her as a superhero and she said that um, by people in her own community that she wanted to protect whose lives that she wanted to have changed the flag had to be here because it represents her and it also represents the spirit of giving. The honor flag will stay with Carrie until she is laid to rest in just a few moments. That flag is uh, so, I hate to use the word sacred, but uh, so important in honoring police officers that he did instruct uh, the officers receiving the flag that only clean gloves ever touch the flag. And they're very careful and delicate with the flag as they handle it. And Brian Mastry said there's a firing squad, which is similar to a 21 gun salute, standing by out at the cemetery. And we will be hearing from them later on. He also wanted us at home to be listening for, he said it is you know, one of the most powerful moments in covering the loss of an officer as he covered Officer Ty Pratt's, um, he was killed in the line of duty back in 2003. And that is when that last call goes out over the radio. And you will hear it on all the officers' radios. It's really signifying, you know, bringing them all together. And that last call is really a moment that makes every single member of law enforcement pause. Very powerful moment. And the rain appears to be even more heavy now than it was before. Another story about Officer Orozco that I did hear from a relative. Uh, you know, one of the symbols from our police is a buffalo. And that giant badge that was created yesterday, if you recall, had a buffalo on it too. We brought you that on the newscast. But uh, one officer had a buffalo on the desk in their office. And when that officer came to work the next day, there was a huge painting of a buffalo right behind the chair. And it was hanging on the wall. And immediately everybody said, that was Carrie. And she did love art. She was an artist and enjoyed drawing and uh, sometimes turned it into a practical joke like she did in that case as well. It is incredibly powerful, John, just to look at this shot of all the members of law enforcement. Obviously, a moment out in the pouring rain to honor Officer Carrie Orozco, but just to see how many officers are attending the gravesite. And, and here's and the salute. Here's the salute. Pastor Bond will be officiating here at the gravesite.
Please prepare for the rendering of honors. Bring your units to attention and present arms. Ball bearers, attention. Present arms.
our sister Carrie has gone to her rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome her to the table of God's children in heaven. With faith and hope in eternal life, let us assist her with our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord also for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with our sister. Together, may we meet Christ Jesus when he who is our life appears in glory. We read in sacred scripture, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, says the Lord, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Lord Jesus Christ, by your own three days in the tomb, you house the graves of all who believe in you, and so made the grave a sign of hope that promises resurrection, even as it claims our mortal bodies. Grant that our sister may sleep here in peace until you awaken her to glory. For you are the resurrection and the life. Then she will see you face to face, and in your life will see light and know the splendor of God, where you live and reign forever and ever. Because God has chosen to call our sister Carrie from this life to himself, we commit her body to the earth. For we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory. For he is risen, the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our sister to the Lord. The Lord may embrace her in peace and raise up her body on the last day. For our sister Carrie, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me shall live even in death. And whoever lives Believe in me, shall never die. Please respond, Lord, have mercy, in the following prayer, if you so desire. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us to mourn for Carrie Sue, and dry the tears of those who weep. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. You wept the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. You raise the dead to life. Give to our sister eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Promise paradise to their ten feet. Bring carry the joys of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Our sister was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Comfort us in our sorrow at Carrie's death. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. With longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us pray as our Savior taught us. Our Father, 
God of holiness and power, through the death of your Son on the cross, you destroyed our death. Through his rest in the tomb, you have held the graves of all who believe in you. Through his rising again, you restored us to eternal life. God of the living and the dead, accept our prayers for those who have died in Christ and are buried with him in the hope of rising again. Since they were true to your name on earth, let them praise you forever in the joy of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. May she rest in peace. May her soul, the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your minds and hearts in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks.
John Mallory, Brian Mastry here at the cemetery. What a powerful and moving tribute to Detective Kerry Orozco. You cannot even begin to count the number of law enforcement officers, and in many cases, their spouses that came here. And I saw more female officers than I've seen at functions like this. You wish you never had to have a funeral for an officer, but I think this one just touched a different type of a nerve. They heard about her community spirit. They heard about her giving back. They heard about her personal tales. Heard about her infant that was coming home the day after she was killed in the line of duty. And they all wanted to be here. I just saw some female, looks like female detectives from Chicago that walked up. And as they said, they were going to try to get this service going, but not start until they had everyone in here. Now, they started a little earlier than that. The heavy rain may have played a role in all of that. But before people started to leave and the service was over, it appeared to me that all the officers, all the detectives were able, the deputies were able to be in line in time to hear at least the final service. And as you heard that, it was very touching when they did the radio call. I'm not sure how clear that was uh, to our viewers, but when they did the last call, for Officer Kerry Orozco. Well, she'll be playing that a little later again. As you heard its tradition, you saw you saw the what's similar to a 21-gun salute. I believe it's called a three-volley salute that started things off. You had the honor guard that carried the casket to the gravesite. You had the family protected. You had them, people holding umbrellas for many of them. You had them surrounded by the men and women of blue in the Omaha Police Department. And then now what you're seeing is a number of them going over and personally, it appears, giving thanks uh, to the service, uh, their condolences. Uh, yesterday was a day of sharing a lot of stories. Some of that may happen here later as well. But I think they're just trying to give an all-around goodness of the impact that Officer Orozco left with them whether they knew him, knew her, or whether they'd heard about her, or whether they just have someone who reminds themselves of an officer within their department. 29 years old, she'd been on the force for just seven years, but was already going after the worst of the worst, and that's how she died, going after the worst of the worst. Somebody that the Omaha police had been looking for for several months, someone who had been accused of shooting at people and missing, uh, someone accused of terroristic threats online. And they finally found their individual, but he was, as you heard, uh, several investigators say he was armed with a gun that many people uh, had not seen in these parts in terms of the drum magazine that they had. So the service is, uh, is over here for Officer Kerry Orozco. John Mallory. Thank you. That's Brian Mastery reporting live from St. Joseph's Cemetery. That is in Council Bluffs as we continue to bring you live images of Officer Orozco's funeral. And John, Brian mentioned the last radio call that went out over 2.39 p.m. today. A final radio call for Officer Carrie Orozco. Very powerful moment as you really just saw a sea of blue with officers there. And it, it takes your breath away when you see that image. And as Brian mentioned, a lot of them female officers even traveling from, say, Chicago mm -hmm. to pay their respects. And the formal ceremony itself, too, paying such tremendous respect. Everything done perfectly and exact. When they had the presentation of arms, it was like an echo as each company uh, sounded off and presented. And uh, taps, when it sounded, you knew that this is it. This is the final resting place for Carrie. And, and uh, this is going to be 
It's not the end of mourning, it's a celebration of her life, and yet so sad at the same time. And I know many people were calling that fellow officers, telling you they want it to be seen as a celebration of Officer Orozco when you were covering it out at the funeral mm -hmm. today. Yeah, and it certainly is, based on mm -hmm. what we've learned from her. And as we continue to watch, you saw the horses leaving the, the cemetery. Uh, just when they played Amazing Grace with the bagpipes, that's powerful as well. And um, a private mo moment for the family, but at the same time, allowing all of us to pay our respects and to say thank you in some way and to support them as well. You know, often you hear it only takes one person to make a difference. Officer Carrie Orozco, she did that. She did that on and off the job in so many lives, including the lives of children in our community who desperately needed it. We want to thank all of you, first of all, for showing your support and for continuing to write in to ask how you can help Officer Orozco, the Omaha Police Department, and her family. And we'll leave you with the words of Pastor Bond, who said, Carrie has gone before us, now up to us to carry on.